The After Hours Gaming League is a corporate for fun gaming league. It is ordinary companies with the extraordinary members in those companies forming teams. These players will play and practice and train outside of their average 40 hour work week in order to play one match a week. The end goal of which is to win the entire season and take $5,000 of my money to give to the charity of their choosing. The whole point of it is that it is fun to compete. You don't have to be the best of the best to enjoy being on a team rooting for your fellow man. I just wanted to briefly remind you that there are other wonderful folks casting for us in the So You Think You Can Cast competition. Just some of them, Maynard and Zeph. My name is Lee Mandelov. I am Maynard and I'm from Australia. I'm. Helen and I go by the name of Zeph. King Nothing and Ether. I'm King Nothing. And I'm Ether. And so, you know, we'll talk a little bit about ourselves. My real name is Ben Horst. Oh, my real name is Brendan Gann. Yeah. I, you can... I knew that, but I thought I'd let you say yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Duckville, LOL. My name is Liam Metzeling. I'm from Australia. I uh, my, uh, my alias for casting is Duckville LOL. Mr. Lama and Laughing Man. My name is Alex Sementelli. Uh, my casting identity is Mr. Lama SC. Penguin and Rifkin. Hi, my name is uh, Stefan Mott, aka Penguin. I cast for Base Trade TV and I'm a player for my insanity. My name is Graham Rogers, also known as Rifkin. And of course, Dr. Zealot and Tara Babcock. My name is David Eccles, and in casting, I'm known as Dr. Zealot. What got you into StarCraft 2? Oh, what got me into StarCraft 2? Well, uh, so I got into StarCraft 2 um, by getting into StarCraft 1. So I played StarCraft 1, got me into StarCraft 2. Uh, so I played StarCraft Brood War, and then even before that, just StarCraft, uh, the original game, uh, since like 1999. Well, I was originally a Brood War player. It was actually the first game that I properly played. The love of StarCraft Brood War behind me, and then you move up to StarCraft 2. So pretty much just the love of the game that preceded it, I guess, is uh, why I got into StarCraft 2. Day 9 and Blizzard fanboyism got me into StarCraft 2. That was pretty much what did it. I got into StarCraft 2 from friends that I played WoW with. I had one of my college roommates get me into StarCraft 2. I'd never played any RTS seriously. Mm -hmm. There's a funny story involving me figuring out that Command & Conquer bases are on wheels before any of my friends and because they also were totally clueless. Uh -huh. And so like I moved my base around and kept moving and I never established a base in one place and my cousin couldn't figure out how he was not winning yet. <laughs> he, kept fun he kept killing everything he found and then not going back to the explored areas where I had moved my base. I yep. remember that vaguely. Yeah, I just kept trucking my base away. Just yeah. like, so that's why I play Terran. No. <laughs> What's your favorite race and or matchup? I play Protoss. I've been playing Protoss for since forever, since StarCraft 1. I forget all day long. <laughs> never get bored. Everybody. My favorite race is Zerg, because I play Zerg. Uh, my favorite matchup to watch is probably ZVP. To cast is probably TVP. My favorite race is Zerg. I just like the swarmy effect of it. My favorite matchup, I like PVT a lot. We are just going to see a giant stem from Jehovah up this main ramp. I'm at, not even looking at his army. By the time he looks back, he's going to have lost half of his army. A time warp goes down over nothing he throws it on his worker probes right there and it looks like he's going to get absolutely slaughtered for playing i play terran and protoss and and mainly when i play terran i do mech terran uh pretty much exclusively i really like um mech tvp despite how very difficult it was in wings of liberty in terms of casting I also enjoy, I really enjoy TVP as well. He's pushing into that. There is a wall of force fields here, in fact, and he's going to get absolutely decimated. There are a couple of extra force fields, and I... I play random, so I like all the races. My favorite race would probably be Terran at this point. My favorite race by far is uh, the Protoss, especially more so like StarCraft 1 Protoss than StarCraft 2 Protoss. <laughs> Matchup uh, in StarCraft 2, is uh, Protoss versus Zerg. The army is here, man. The army is just gonna do so much damage. All of those Colossus doing an incredible amount of damage. The Mothership Corps going ahead and dropping down these abilities. Just so much damage going down. Everything is dying. Favorite race is Zeg, and matchup is ZVZ. Favorite race, hands down without a doubt, is Terran. 
big old T represent. At the moment of this, at the pre-release of HOTS, I gotta say, I am loving TVZ. Oh no, he's only gonna... He oh, can he get this wall off? It's gonna, gonna be so close! In. I don't think he is! Oh, oh he can so certainly in. get in! Puzzle is just not looking like he's gonna be too good a position here. Oh, he's getting the supply deep Rifkin. He's gonna supply block his opponent so hard. Oh no, Penguin. I don't see this could be one of the quicker games we've seen in the After Hours Gaming League here, folks. What are you looking forward to in Heart of the Swarm? The improvement of custom games. I know a lot of people are looking forward to the professional scene with all these crazy changes happening to units, meta gaming, and what have you. But really, truthfully, I was that guy in Brood War. I sat there, I played every sunken defense, every tower defense out there, and I've done that with StarCraft 2, and it felt like there was only four of them, not the hundreds of variations that there, there once were. So I'm really looking for the custom map makers to step it up for Heart of the Swarm. I know this is going to sound like, oh, Dr. Zella, you're such a noob, but. I'm looking up most forward to the single player campaign. It's Kerrigan's story and it's the Zerg story. The second story out of like a trilogy is the one where everything goes bad. It's where everything dies. That's what I'm looking forward to. Brand new metagames, new builds, adding to the skill ceiling and just for it to become a more exciting spectator sport. It, it already is the best spectator sport as far as I'm concerned, but to be better. I'm just looking forward to, hopefully, hopefully looking forward to more yeah. macro games and less cheesy games on the on the yeah. pro level. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of goes along with what I'm what I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely looking forward to a refresh on sort of refresh and reset on existing strategies where a bunch of the stuff that worked in Wings of Liberty is still mostly going to work in in hots, maybe with a couple tweaks, maybe mm -hmm. you throw an Oracle in here, maybe you throw a couple widow mines over there, and like everything works out the same. But Seeing it develop will be really fun, and I'm sure there will be a series of nerfs and buffs at the beginning of release sure. that will change it some more and affect the new strategies that are coming out. So I'm mostly looking forward to the instability uh, of the changing metagame and the strategies and how the ladder's going to turn out that way, as well as pro tournaments, esports for sure. Yeah. Big deal. And clans and groups can't forget that yeah I, like i've been playing hots for so long at this point a couple of months that i forget that all of the clans and groups and, and watching replays stuff, with buddies replays with friends and yes. restart those are also super that cool. is so cool but still the metagame is still i'm cool. looking forward to seeing how many times Terran is nerfed seriously though i actually really am looking forward to the meat lists the meat lists are awesome i'm looking forward to seeing how swarm hosts are going to be used if you could tell Day9 one thing, what would it be? Also, I'm Day9. <laughs> it would probably be some ridiculously long sentence about how awesome he is. I would say, uh, you know, you're an absolute star, you, and not in the context of being famous or whatever, but uh, just in the fact that he's done so much work for the community, he's put a lot of effort into making things accessible. I think that's one thing that um, was lacking a little bit in in sort of uh, you know if, if you weren't watching day nine there was a there's a little bit of a, an inaccessibility factor that went into watching Starcraft and as a player learning the game or as a player just wanting to not even not even learning just sort of more appreciating the game day nine daily and the casting that he's done and all these sorts of things that he's done with such um charisma and uh you know integrity have really shine uh a really good light on the game and i think it's been just brilliant that he's been able to uh, do such a thing and do it really well i don't know if i would tell day nine anything but I would challenge him to a DDR duel to the death. If I could ask Day9 one thing, it would be the true identity of all the Felicities out there. It really bothers me that that's like the code name, the Jane Doe of all of his girl stories. They're never people I'm ever gonna interact with. They're not anybody I will ever have to be concerned about meeting in my entire life, but just not knowing the secrecy of it. Day9, why? I'd say thank you for doing the Day9 dailies. They were helpful to me in terms of my casting and coming up with like video series and stuff. I would ask him if he's finally gotten around to watching My Little Pony like you promised. So if you could ask Day9 one thing, or tell, if you could tell Day9 one thing, what would it be? Day9? Maybe it would be a question. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna say Day9, like, thanks for being you for doing the things that you're doing. I, I have a blast watching your streams and uh, watching your games and the way you you uh, cast. It's it's really funny. Um, I definitely laugh a lot. So 
Good stuff, man. Keep doing what you're doing. There you go. So if if I had to tell Day9 one thing, or could tell Day9 one thing, <clears throat> I, I think this would work. I don't know. I, I'd say, let's go out for ice cream. I'm buying. Because then, then I could tell him all the other things that I want to tell him. Don't, right. don't tell him I said it, though. It's a secret. Like, I just want him to think he's getting ice cream. But then I can be like, <laughs> you know, thanks for creating the HGL, and thanks for doing dailies consistently for years on end. Like, yeah. putting out content every day for, I don't know, four or five days of the week. It's, it's pretty amazing when you're traveling all over the world and doing all that stuff. And I watched a lot of those for, you know, keeping up with esports, supporting esports. He got on Forbes' list of successful young people. Like, that's really cool. Yeah. So promoting all of that emerging stuff with esports and keeping the StarCraft community alive, doing dailies, and, and promoting being a better gamer and yeah. with a math degree. That's awesome. It's really cool. So, that's what I Thank you so much for everything you've done for our community. Without you, we would be a much darker place. What's been your favorite part of the AHGL thus far? Favorite part of the AHGL is just, um, re it's just really cool to see big name companies going head to head against each other and killing each other in the, in the glorious battlefield that is Starcraft. Learning about some of the companies, like I had no idea about Gree and, uh, and Storm 8 and Epic and all these, all these companies and so I, I like to do a lot of research about who, uh, who I'm casting and in this case what I'm casting. Um, so reading about what the company does is, is, a, is, you know, a little bit of an interesting thing, just a general sort of knowledge thing which has been really fun. My favourite part of the HDL so far would have to be casting Heart of the Swarm games and seeing how the game's evolving. My favorite part of the AHGL is seeing that since it's not all like pro level games, we're seeing a lot of really awesome unorthodox strategies coming out of the players. Uh, some they're they're more eager to try new stuff, I feel, than some of the pros are, and it's it really shows in the quality of the games. It's just really uh, really what's awesome. What's your favorite part of the AHGL so far? Favorite part is being able to cast with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Isn't he so such a nice great caster? Uh. Guys, vote vote for us. Okay, after <laughs> <laughs> no, but. It's it's really fun to just be able to participate in in this league and uh, be able to, to to talk to like some of the guys from the other companies really and and play um, just play this really awesome game and and get to cast and talk about StarCraft and yeah. play StarCraft and you know my favorite part. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've definitely enjoyed casting. We haven't we haven't gotten to an ace match yet. If we had, that would be my favorite part so far. Yeah. But as it is. Um, I am on the Microsoft B team, and my favorite part of the HGL so far was winning my first match. Uh, the staff, I'm actually going to say, and that's just simply because they have been absolutely amazing people, um, the nicest people ever. My favorite part about the After Hour Gaming League thus far actually has been interacting with the casters. I mean, there's there's the games which are great, the companies that are playing which are equally great, and I feel everyone's already done them justice by talking about them. Truthfully, really, I enjoy having gotten to meet and talk with the other casters, getting their perspectives on certain aspects of the game and getting to know that like we're, uh, I'm not the only one out there working to be a caster. It's, it's a good feeling. How did you get involved in casting? I'm a caster for, quite frankly, the most unorthodox reason. I've always been a fan of StarCraft 2. I had it on release day. I was never that good at playing though. So what I did was I got into League of Legends casting and I was doing a little bit here and there dabbling, still very amateur casting all around. Uh, when someone picked me up and said, hey, would you like to try casting some StarCraft instead? You seem to know your way around to XSplit. So I was like, okay, sure, I'll give it a shot. I'll probably be terrible. Uh, fast forward to today and it's just something I've come to love. I've grown into it very nicely. I love the whole game. I've got to know a lot of the pro players, which has made it really fun for me. And quite frankly, I just, I talk a lot in real life. So it all works out. I'm a caster because, um, well, basically when I got into casting, uh, I wanted to be a part of the StarCraft 2 community and I was really bad at the game, so I was like, okay, it's fun, I really enjoy it, it allows me to learn. I'm a caster because I love it, it's a passionate hobby of mine, recently discovered over the past couple of years and I would never, I would never give it up unless something horrible happened to my voice, <laughs> if my throat fell out I'd stopped, but uh, otherwise I'd do it forever. I like casting StarCraft because it's a really fun hobby and it's a great way to try and interest new people in the game. It's just so that I could um, you know, try and try and bring the game to more people, I suppose, and also maybe bring a bit of attention to the sea scene as well. You know, I've done a lot of stuff with uh, local teams here and uh, casts that go up on my channel. It's been really fun. So casting, 
Uh, casting, it's a joy to bring the audience with you on uh, a journey to tell the story of what's happening in the game and punctuating the match with uh, emotion and uh, analysis. I'm a caster because fuck Axel Toss. Axel Toss uh, is a good friend of mine and I was there when he started casting and I was like, oh, that looks kind of fun, but I was kind of lazy, didn't want to get the equipment. And then like a year later, he was like, hey, this is pretty fun, blah, blah, blah. And he was trying to do something. I was like, well, I could do that. He's like, no, you can't. So this is basically all just to spite him. Perform your best air guitar. Finger tapping, man. That's where it's at. I'm actually an I'm actually an actual guitarist. Yeah, surprise, actual guitarist.